Hey y'all, it's Megan from Made for Mermaids and today we're working on the Rinley pattern. In this video, I'm sewing up the tie back option with the flutter sleeve and the romper with the pocket. If you wanna see the full back version and a dress, I'll link it down below. You're going to need to cut two front bodices with the strap placement marking. I like to do just a little eighth inch snip and you need one lining and one main, or if you're doing the adult version, you can also cut the shelf bra pieces. For the tie back, you're going to need the tie back pieces. You are going to need to prep that tie back piece by marking the back circle on your back main piece. And also you are going to snip a half inch into that marking just like your tutorial since I'm doing the pockets on the romper I have two pockets mirror images and I cut away the pockets on the front piece those are also two mirror images of the romper and then two mirror images of the back romper and cutting my notches out for the tie back you're going to need four tie back straps two mirror images and if you're doing the flutter ruffle sleeve you need to cut those markings on that piece and then your two ruffle sleeves mirror images and we are ready to start so for the flutter ruffle sleeve you're going to gather run two gathering stitches along the long straight edge so I just use the longest straight stitch on my sewing machine and I sew one very close because the um, seam allowance on the strap is a quarter inch. So I do about an eighth of an inch away and then about three eighths inch away. So just run two gathering stitches on each ruffle sleeve piece. Then you're going to want to gather the ruffle piece to meet between the two little tiny eighth inch snips that you made on your strap piece. So what I like to do is just find the half between those two snips and then right in between half of the ruffle so it's quick and easy to gather it to fit. So I'm going to do this on each side. Remember you should have mirror images of your strap. So you want to have um, a strap for each side, left and right. Once you have gathered the piece to fit between your markings, you're going to place them right sides together, right between those two ruffle strap placements like this and you are going to baste the ruffle piece on to your strap and you're going to do this on each side once those ruffle sleeves are basted on you're going to roll the pe the ruffle piece towards the center of the strap and pin it in place so it stays out of the way and doesn't get caught in the seam in this next step then take your mirror image strap piece and place it on top right sides together sandwiching that ruffle strap piece and we're going to sew the straps together with a quarter inch seam allowance along both long ends of the strap and also at the short end that does not have the ruffle strap piece once you have both straps sewn, then you are going to turn it right side out, remove the pin that was holding the ruffle strap away from the seam, and then also remove those gathering stitches and then press it really nicely with your iron. Do that with both strap pieces. Now we're going to attach the strap to the front bodice. So I'm gonna find the center of the strap by folding it in half, the end that is unsewn and has the ruffle sleeve. And then with right sides together, you're going to match the center of the strap to the strap placement marking on the front bodice. And then you're going to baste the straps in place. 
Next, lay your main bodice flat and take your lining or shelf bra piece and place it on top, right sides together. And we're going to sew the main and lining together with the strap sandwich in between with a half inch seam allowance right along the top. After you get them sewn together, you can press the seam towards the lining and under stitch to hold the lining in place and so it doesn't peek out over the main while you're wearing it. Then give it a nice press. Then go ahead and set that front bodice aside while we work on the back bodice. So we do need to do some prepping of the bodice, which I talked about in the beginning. So I'm gonna go over it here. On your main front bodice, you're going to want to mark the circle that's on your piece with chalk or a fabric pen. At the top of the circle, you are going to snip into the piece a half of an inch. Once you have that snipped and it marked on each main and lining piece, you are gonna press from the center curve to that snipped half inch down. You're gonna press it towards the wrong side by that half of an inch and we're going to hem that in place just like this. After you have that edge stitch and hemmed in place, then you're going to want to take your front main bodice and right at the center, so I'm gonna fold it in half to find the center, you're going to want to place a small piece of knit inter interfacing because we're going to create a buttonhole here to thread the tie straps through. So you want it about 3 8 of an inch from the top raw edge right in the center and then you're going to create your buttonhole. You want to make sure that it's between the top and that marking on your piece so the straps can go through the casing. Now I'm placing the main and the lining pieces together with the right sides facing each other and aligning all those hemmed edges, the curved edges, and the straight edges. And we are going to sew the pieces together along the top edge that is unhemmed right here where I'm placing the marking from the edge to the hem, from the raw edge to the hemmed edge with a half inch seam allowance. And then along the center curve where I'm placing the yellow clips, you're going to sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I like to do the top edges where the red clip is with my sewing machine because you're going to get a much cleaner finish since that center portion is already hemmed. You can use the serger, you might just want to go back and use your sewing machine on the ends. Then we're going to press the lining towards the wrong side and press it so right sides are out. And you're going to want to press this really nicely with your iron. For the next step, if you're doing the adult version with the shelf bra, you may want to skip this sewing of the casing until after you put your shelf bra band on because there is a very small, just enough for your seam allowance. If you're not doing the shelf bra and you're doing the lining, then now you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch directly on top that drawn half circle on your pattern piece. And you do want to use a narrow zigzag or a longer straight stitch or you can use your cover stitch like a chain stitch because this is going to get a lot of wear and tear because this is the casing that is gonna tie the ties. The next step is going to be to sew the side seams. So you're going to open your main and lining pieces like this. And then you're going to do the same thing with the back pieces. You're gonna put the back 
main piece to the front main piece and the back lining piece to the main lining piece. Because you have stitched the casing, this looks a little tricky, but it's really not. It's because the casing is already sewn, so it looks like it's not going to fit, but if you just work on the main and then the lining, it will all fit together nicely. And you're gonna sew them at each side, creating the side seams with a half inch seam allowance. Then you're going to press your lining toward the wrong side and treat it as one piece. So you can, after you press it with your iron, you can base them together along the bottom edge. This is for the lining. If you're doing the shelf bra, then you'll want to finish the shelf bra with the band first and then press it towards the wrong side. Next, I'm going to go ahead and quarter my bodice so it's ready to attach to my romper later. So I'm going to just put the side seams together and then place a clip at the front center and at the back center. Then you can go ahead and set your bodice aside while we work on our romper bottom. Since I'm adding the pocket, I am going to put my pocket piece right sides together with one front wrapper aligning those cut out edges and you're going to sew them together on the curved cutout with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then you can pull the pocket from the romper and press the seam toward the pocket and under stitch so the pocket does not peek out from the romper while you're wearing it. Then you're going to press the pocket towards the wrong side and only the pocket, you're going to fold the pocket piece back over itself so the right sides are together. The notch on the top of the pocket should line up with the top of the pocket seam on the romper piece. And you can pin this pocket in place. And you can see that notch matches up with that curved edge. And then the side should also match up with the side of the romper. Along the bottom curved edge of the pocket piece, and make sure you just have the pocket grab, you're going to sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then you will go ahead and baste the pocket onto that front romper piece along the side seam, right here where I'm pinning, and along the top of the romper piece. After you have basted the pocket, you're just going to treat it as one piece and you're going to do the same thing on the other side of your front romper with your other pocket piece. Once both pockets are sewn into the front piece, you're going to take your back romper piece and lay it out flat with the right side up and take your front romper piece and put it right sides down, align the side seam and we're going to sew them together out along the side seam and also along the inner leg with a half inch seam allowance. Then repeat the same step sewing the side seam and inner leg with the other back romper and front romper pieces. Then you need to sew the crotch pieces together. So I have one leg right side out and one leg wrong side out. And I'm going to place the leg that's right side out inside the other. So they are right sides together and you're going to align them at the inner leg seam and along both front and back crotch curves matching the front and back notches. Then you're going to sew them together along the curve with a half inch seam allowance. 
Then pull them right side out and the next step is to hem the bottom leg openings by pressing a half an inch toward the wrong side and edge stitching in place. Once you do that, you are going to want to run two gathering stitches along the top waistline, one a quarter inch from the top and one three quarter inches from the top. And then it's time to attach the bodice to the romper. So I have my bodice wrong side out and I am going to place the bodice over the romper. You're going to match the center front seam to the center front on your bodice, the side seams together, and then the center back seam with the center back bodice. Once you have all the quarter points together, you are going to pull the gathering stitch threads so that the romper bottom matches the width of the bodice. Then you're going to sew the bodice to the romper with a half inch seam allowance. Once that seam is sewn, you can pull the bodice right side out, give it a nice press, and pull those gathering threads out. Now your romper is complete, it's just time to thread the tie back straps through the casing. So you can wear these crisscrossed or straight either one, just decide which before you start threading them. And you will take one end of the strap and you will thread it through one side of the back casing and then pull it through the center button hole. Then you will do the same thing to the other side. And this does make the straps adjustable so once you get it on, you can play with it and then tie it. So you'll take the other end, thread it through the other side, and then pull it through the same buttonhole. And then you can tie it into a bow or tie it into a knot. Either one, both look cute, and your Renly is complete. I absolutely love this pattern and I hope you do too. We would love to see them if you make one, either post it in our Facebook group or tag us on Instagram at Made for Mermaids. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below as always, and I will try to answer them. Thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see what you make.